Okay, so now that we are all familiar with what a scattering matrix is, uh, an interesting question is, how does that scattering matrix relate to the impedance matrix before? So remember, we had this notion of an impedance matrix, V is equal to Z times I. Is there some relationship between that impedance matrix and my scattering matrix? And the answer is yes, there, there, there is actually a mathematical relationship uh, that relates the two, which means if I know one of these, I can then calculate the other and vice versa using that relationship. <clears throat> so remember that the nth element of this vector, V sub n, is comprised of a forward V plus, plus V sub n minus a forward and a reverse propagating wave. And likewise, there will be some current corresponding to that particular voltage, which will, uh, we'll, we'll write this as I sub n plus minus, I sub n minus, which is related to the voltage through the characteristic impedance. So I'm going to write one over Z naught <clears throat> times V sub n plus minus V sub n minus. Now for the sake of this argument, I'm going to assume that all of my transmission lines which feed some particular microwave network have the exact same characteristic impedance. And that may sound like a, a strange assumption, but it's really not, right? So again, imagine this is some black box uh, microwave network, and I have to feed it with a cable, right? So I would take this and plug it into here. And I know that this cable has an impedance, a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. <clears throat> and if I were to then, you know, excite one of the other ports as well. So, so hypothetically, I have two cables here, like so. So that Z naught might correspond to this cable. The question would be, why would I pick a different impedance on this cable? And the answer is, generally speaking, I wouldn't, unless there was a really, really good reason to. But that would be the exception rather than the rule. So for the sake of argument, we can assume that all of these cables have the same characteristic impedance. And it will make our mathematics much simpler as we go through this relationship. So bear that in mind, all of these cables have to essentially have the same impedance in order for this derivation to work. Okay, so we've assumed this is going to be the same and not change as a function of n, right? <clears throat> so what that now implies is we'll go back to this impedance uh, or, or this, this imp matrix vector equation up here. And we have Z, this is my impedance matrix times my current is equal to Z matrix times one over Z naught, because I'm just gonna plug in essentially this equation here, and I'm going to get V plus minus V minus. So that is my current essentially, in terms of all my voltages here. <clears throat> and this is going to equal V, okay? So essentially, this whole thing here is just my currents, okay? Which is equal to V plus plus V minus. So these are vectors of all the forward propagating signals. And these are the reverse propagating or the, the, the entering and exiting. And we're gonna do a simple little trick here. Um, this Z naught is kind of a pain to, to have to keep track of. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of lump it into this impedance matrix here. Uh, what the book does is it just sort of arbitrarily assumes that Z naught is equal to one for all of my, my transmission lines, which it feels a little unnecessary to do that, but I, I can sort of see why they're, they're kind of trying that. I think it makes more sense to simply define this as a slightly different matrix. I'm going to call it, I'm gonna write it as a Z here, a, a fancy Z, <clears throat> it's simply, the impedance matrix divided by Z naught. So you can call this a normalized impedance matrix, right? A normalized impedance matrix. So I'm just gonna write, replace all this little term here with my fancy Z instead as a reminder that I have to divide by that Z naught. And that should not feel uncomfortable because we basically did the same thing with uh, Smith charts, right? <clears throat> the Smith chart, you had to normalize all of your characteristic impedances 
uh, to a value of one, and then you did everything in terms of that normalized impedance to create a solution, which you would then unnormalize later uh, after the fact. And we'll do some more of that stuff later probably when we start doing matching networks. But in any case, so I'm just gonna define this as a shorthand for that little product there. Okay, so essentially I'm just going to, let's just rewrite this real quick. My fancy Z is, uh, sorry, times my V plus minus V minus is equal to V plus plus V minus, like so. <clears throat> so all I'm gonna do is rearrange my terms a little bit. So what you get is, let's move this a little. I will have fancy Z times V plus minus fancy Z, <laughs> the normalized impedance, times V minus is equal to V plus plus uh, V minus. So I'm gonna rearrange some terms and we will get, so those are, this is a matrix times a vector here, so we'll move around. So Z times V plus minus V minus, oh, sorry, yeah, minus V plus is equal to V minus uh, plus Z V minus. <clears throat> so it's tempting to want to factor this V term out here. And if this was a regular algebraic expression, you would want to say something like Z times, or sorry, um, you'd want to say something like Z minus one times V plus, right? But since this is a matrix here and this is a vector, you have to replace one with sort of its equivalent in the matrix world, which is the identity matrix. So in other words, if I have a vector V and I multiply it by the identity matrix, <clears throat> you get the same vector out. Only we don't, we're not allowed to call this I because we already reserved I for current. So instead of I, your book calls it U instead, the unity matrix, or it's still the identity matrix. But just remember at the end of the day, this U is just a diagonal matrix of all ones like that. And then all the other elements are zero. So that, that's the, uh, the, the identity matrix if you remember your linear algebra. So the long story short is this little guy here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it up to over here. Basically you get the following. So Z minus U times V plus is equal to U plus Z, or but the, the, the summation will uh, commute. So I'm gonna say Z uh, plus U times V minus. Okay, so, so remember, and when you're doing matrix vector arithmetic, you're not, the, the U here is the equivalent of a one, right? <clears throat> And so now I'm going to solve for V minus because that was part of our definition for the scattering matrix, right? V minus is equal to my scattering matrix times V plus. So I'm just going to solve for V minus here and you get essentially V minus is equal to, I'm just gonna rearrange a bit. I will get Z plus U. So those are matrices and I get inverse times Z minus U, sorry, matrices, times V plus, like so. So if I compare this to this, oops, excuse me, up here. So compare these expression, expressions to each other. And you see that this lump of linear algebra here is essentially the scattering matrix by definition. So all of this comes together and that is my scattering matrix, Oops, excuse me, like that. So let's go ahead and rewrite that up here, that solution, just for convenience. What you find is the scattering matrix is equal to Z plus U inverse times Z minus U, like so. <clears throat> okay, so given the impedance matrix, I can now calculate my scattering matrix now I just have to apply this little formula here. And it looks pretty yucky and, is, and it can get very nasty. If I have like a 50 by 50 network, this would be awful. But MATLAB again comes to our aid because you give it the numbers and MATLAB will crunch on this stuff, no problem. And also what's fun is I can do the inverse problem here by solving for Z. 
And it's a pretty straightforward calculation of just rearranging some uh, matrices. And what you will get is essentially the following, u plus s times u minus s inverse, okay? So that is the relationship between S and Z. Given the one, you can calculate the other, which means all of the information of the one is essentially contained in the other. 